Hi, this is Paul, and this is my State of the Union. And I'm giving it now because we've hit several milestones and we have lots of indicators that say we have had our economic recovery. This is great news, and we should have good years coming up. First thing we're going to look at is the stock market. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is an index of these 30 companies. There's big companies like Bank of America, The Home Depot, Walmart. Their cumulative price is a good indicator of the economy. Looking now at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the peak before the crash was right here, where on October 9, 2007, it was just above 14,000. We had the big crash, and this is due to the housing market meltdown. This was be all the foreclosures and bad loans. This was a huge economic event. The percentage that the Dow dropped during this period here, it's, it's dropped the same percentage in 1929. That's what caused the stock market crash, and that's what caused the Great Depression. But we turn around, and we recover. And the milestone is right here, that in the last couple of days, it's been popping over 14,000. So over a period of five years, four months, we have recovered. Okay, looking now at the NASDAQ composite, which is a much larger composite of about 5,000 companies. And the peak before the crash is right here on October 31st, 2007 at 2859. We have our big crash and then the recovery is right around here on July 27th, 2011, which was three years, almost nine months after the crash or almost two years ago. So the NASDAQ recovered almost two years ago. Taking a quick look at the S&P 500, uh, it's another index, but it has 500 stocks, so it's taking a broader look at the industry. And uh, we've got the peak right here, 1565, and, uh, um, October 2007. Um, we've got the crash, we've got almost recovery, it's almost there. So it appears that the stock market has recovered. Now, this is a great milestone and a first indicator of U.S. economic recovery. A second indicator is the construction industry. Now, I'm a mechanical engineer. I do heating, cooling, and plumbing building plans, mostly commercial projects in Tucson, Arizona. My company's project load just jumped recently. Now, this tell says that six months to a year ago, these projects were started. The land was purchased, it got funded, it went into design, now it's on my desk. In another month, two or three, these, this is, these projects are going to start being built. When the construction industry gets going, it, it starts a huge economic engine. It creates a lot of jobs, and these are jobs that can't be outsourced to China. Joe the plumber will be getting calls soon. Plus, there's all the associated jobs that goes along with it, like the carpet guy and the carpet manufacturer. And it just starts this massive economic engine. All right, let's look a little more at the construction industry. Now, we've got here is uh, the stock for Polte. Uh, they are a, a home builder. And uh, we've got the peak for the crash. We've got the crash, and it bottles around nowhere. And look what happens this year. Going to do the same. Look at Lennar, another, a home builder. Crash, models around, and look at what happens this last year. Oh my. Here's another indicator of the construction industry. And this is the real estate market. This is Tucson, Arizona. And these are the average sales prices. Here's 2002, 2003, 2004, and it rises up, and 2007 is the peak, and then average sales prices go down, and they bottom out here, 2011, and look at this. 
The average sales prices in Tucson, Arizona are starting to go up. They already have for a year. So the stock market has already recovered. The construction and housing market, they've hit bottom about a year ago and have been increasing ever since. Let's look at some more indicators. Let's look at unemployment. Okay, looking now at the unemployment, this information is from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. And we have a crash. We have unemployment rises. It gets all the way to 10% and has been dropping ever since. And it's now officially down to 7.8%. And if the, if the construction uh, keeps picking up, this should drop even more. I know we got a long way to get into the 5% range, but we're improving. Looking now at the GDP, or the Gross Domestic Product, which is basically the amount of goods and services uh, the people in the U.S. produce. And this information is from the World Bank. So 2004, 2005, it keeps increasing. And then in 2008, we have a little bit of a crash. It drops down a bit, but it's been increasing ever since. So that's a good indicator. Plus, it appears that the gross domestic product is increasing at the rate of about half a trillion dollars per year. Okay, so the stock market has recovered. The housing market and construction hit bottom a little over a year ago and has been improving since. Housing prices are, are increasing. Unemployment has been dropping steadily. The gross domestic product has been increasing. These are all great indicators that we are on the right track. We are improving uh, our economy. The U.S. economy is recovering and it's on, on a great track. Now, up till now, I didn't mention politics one bit. All the information I have was completely neutral, just stock charts that are, anybody can find anywhere. And I don't care if you're candidate was red or blue or green or purple, but the current administration deserves some credit for putting us on such a nice track. I've got one more thing to look at before we get into uh, the, the national debt, which gets a little bit more complicated. Okay, let's look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average again. Here's the peak before the crash. Here's the crash. The point I'm trying to make here is that right here on January 20th, 2009 is when Obama took office. That's his inauguration. So this is what happened on Obama's watch. Well, here's the crash. What happened here was the housing meltdown. You can't blame Republicans or Democrats on this. This was many, many people's involvement over a few decades. But from here on, this is what's happened under the current administration. And I think it deserves some credit. Okay, looking now at this chart that I did, and all I did was I took the Dow Jones Industrial Average from today and I potted it right along top of the Dow Jones Industrial Average in 1929. And all I did was line up the peak before the crash. So today's is the blue on top. And the bottom is the black from 1929. And if you notice that from the first 354 days, the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped to 46% of the peak before the crash in the same amount of time. And this is why I say both events were equally as devastating. If the stimulus money hadn't been spent, we could have continued to free fall and gone into the uh, Dow range somewhere around 2000. But instead, five years, four months later, it's popped back up to over 14,000. And that's why I say that the Dow has had uh, a recovery. Compare this to the stock market crash in 1929 that took 25 years to recover to the levels before the crash. All right, so we're doing good so far, right? The stock market has, its, has had its recovery. Uh, the housing market and the construction industry, they've been on the way up for over a year. 
Uh, unemployment has been coming down steadily every year for three years. The GDP has been going up steadily for three years. Now, this did not come free. The stimulus money was very expensive. We paid a lot of money and it went into the national debt and we just borrowed, which is terrible. And we borrowed, but I think it was the right thing to do because now we're in such a good spot. And now that we recovered, we uh, maybe even another year from now, start cutting back and drop the amount we spend. If I was king, if I was president, I would have done the same exact thing. I think that spending the money that has been spent propped everything up, things are back on track. Now we need to tackle the debt issue. All right, so all I did was I go into Google and I tapped, typed US national debt. And I got these four choices and two of them are, are, are crap, but these two are interesting. First one, and I'm gonna zoom in on this. Okay, looking at this website, the usdebtclock.org, it's pretty amazing. It's got all these numbers and they keep on moving and they are showing you real time uh, what the, uh, all this information is. So it's got a couple of these uh, numbers are pretty impressive here. This one right here, US national debt, right, at, right now it's at 16.5 trillion and it's going up. Basically, we are spending more than we are earning. And we are living outside of our means. But we've got another number down here that's really pretty interesting. This is the U.S. federal um, budget deficit. This tells you by how much we are living outside of our means. And it's going down. So the amount that we are living, borrowing too much, it's going down. So things are improving. Another number that's real interesting is right here. It's the U.S. federal tax revenue, and it's going up. Now this is, this is taxes, and the taxes are increasing. And this is a good way that taxes are increasing. It's not a tax rate. This is Joe the plumber is getting more money on his paycheck. So, so more money is coming. Uh, he's paying more in taxes. This is a good thing. And if the, if the economic recovery continues, and if unemployment keeps dropping and the construction industry gets going and uh, revenues keep increasing, well then this will keep going up. And as this goes up, this goes down. And if this gets to zero, you've balanced your budget. I searched and found this little chart here. And this shows what the tax revenue, they call it receipts here, what the tax receipts have been, how much taxes were paid to the federal government every year. This information has been supplied from the Office of Management and Budget. This is from the White House. We've also, they've given us estimates on what the future revenues are expected to be. Using these numbers, it looks like in the next one, two, three years, the revenues from taxes is going to go up by one trillion dollars. If that's the case, then that takes care of the deficit and we will have a balanced budget. So according to this, this information, we look like we're going to have a balanced budget in three years, in 2015. All right, so when I typed in U.S. National debt. I got the four websites. This fourth one gets you to this chart here. This chart here is pretty interesting. This is um, zfax.com. And I did verify the numbers. But uh, we've got the gross national debt as a percentage of DDP. So uh, here we've got World War II. And then we've got Harry Truman, a uh, Democrat, and the, the, it drops a whole bunch. And then we've got Dwight Eisenhower, a Republican, and it drops. And Kennedy, um, Lyndon Johnson, uh, Democrats, and it drops. And Nixon, four Republicans, and it flats out. And Carter, Democrat, and it still goes down a little bit. 
Then we've got Bush and Reagan, and look how much they have increased to the national debt. Clinton not only balanced the budget, but he got into a surplus and dropped the national debt down. Then uh, George uh, Jr., look how much he increased the national debt. This section here, where it rises up, this is the stimulus. This is, was started under Bush, the uh, Stimulus Act of 2008, and Obama just continued it. Now, if you're a Republican, and you're crying to me about the national debt, I'm going to tell you to shut up. Look how much the national debt was increased under the uh, Republican administrations. The Democrat, Clinton knocked it down 11 points. Obama is continuing with the stimulus. Now this guy does something interesting. I blocked that out initially so we could look at the chart without this information first. But what he is saying is that if the Reagans and the Bushes had balanced their budgets, and the Democrats did what they did, that this is where the national debt would be today. That if Reagan and Bush Sr., instead of uh, increasing the national debt tremendously, they would have balanced their budget, the national debt would have continued to have gone down. We, it would have had a surplus. Clinton did have a surplus and dropped it down, and if Bush had balanced the budget and not added to the national debt, but that's not what happened. And that's why we are in trouble right here. All right, so to give a uh, summary and a conclusion, my State of the Union tonight, getting pretty late, February 6th, 2013, stock market has recovered. The housing and construction industries uh, turned around from bottom a little over a year ago and are improving and increasing. Housing prices are going up. Employment uh, has been going down for three years and it looks like we're going to have a nice wave of uh, dropping unemployment with construction picking up. The GDP has been increasing for the last three years and uh, we do have a problem with our national debt. A lot of this problem will go away by itself as the budget gets balanced, as revenues increase, as the employment keeps dropping, and as the uh, economic engine keeps on moving and reven uh, tax revenues increase. But we still need to work on a national debt, but we have got some good years coming up.